attention out of the purge net. All convoy vehicles proceed yes, to sir, we have 12 stop. You have a go to the floor and hold. Long before sonic booms rock Florida's space coast and a space shuttle glides to a stop, dozens of specialized vehicles and their operators snake their way toward the shuttle landing facility at NASA's Kennedy Space Center. They're not your average looking vans, trucks, or semis either. Each one is equipped with unique gadgets and gizmos to make the shuttle safe to enter, assist the flight crew out, and prepare the spacecraft for towing to a nearby processing hangar. It's a rather big uh, group of people that come out and, and they all have an important role, of course. And then when they say, we're definitely landed here, let's go, you know, it, it, it's neat to see everybody get in their vehicles and go out and support it. The nucleus of the operation is based in the Convoy Command Vehicle, a 40-foot-long modified motorhome with state-of-the-art video cameras, recorders, television monitors, a giant communication satellite antenna, and a weather system to monitor the temperature, wind speed, and direction on the runway. And it's basically like a mini firing room in there. They have uh, consoles and, and some information and, of course, all the comm that's needed. And you have the uh, NASA convoy commander and then you have uh, USA uh, operations and you have a safety and I believe there's a quality guy in there and there's some support people for it. And that's basically the heart of the running the whole operation. Immediately after wheel stop, NASA fire rescue trucks head toward the shuttle while emergency helicopters hover nearby just in case they're needed. Users in the heat sparks are open flame may result in fire. Exposure to fuel may cause permanent damage to the skin, eyes, and respiratory system. To keep the workers who will approach the spacecraft safe from these hazards, they put on airtight protective gear called self-contained atmospheric protective ensembles, or scape suits. They also go through extensive training to pull off this extremely choreographed operation. We have to hook up within 30 minutes. Uh, it's very important to maintain cooling, maintain power in the orbiter. In between la launches and landings, um, we, we decided we needed some kind of simulator to practice. So this is this big yellow monstrosity here is our uh, orbiter super simulator, we call it. After the shuttle is deemed safe, two convoys deploy onto the runway, one in front and one behind the shuttle. The forward heads toward the nose of the shuttle with vehicles and personnel that remove time-sensitive payloads and experiments and astronaut support personnel call ASP usher the flight crew members out of the shuttle through the white room truck and into their crew transport vehicle. When I was back on the runway here at KSC, and uh, you know, you go through all the shutdown checks and stuff, and you're talking mission control, and finally it comes to the point where the ASP wants you to get out of the seat so that he can take over. Yeah, I didn't want to get out of the seat. I mean, this was my spaceship. I had it for, you know, two weeks on orbit, uh, you can't have it back. You know, I don't want to give it up. Handing over the keys, so to speak, is quite an experience for workers on the ground, too. Uh, when the vehicle lands on the runway, when you go into the vehicle, it almost sounds like a, like a musty locker room. So when the crew is coming out, they're asking, what is that smell? It's a fresh air, and we're looking, at what is that smell? You know, it's musty, but it cleans up pretty good. Meanwhile, the AF convoy has deployed from the shuttle landing facility's midfield park site and it's operating on a very strict time clock. First, a purge unit that pumps conditioned air into the shuttle moves into place. Um, it sits on top of KMAG, which is, um, comes from Germany. It's a, a mine type of uh, equipment, low rider. It's got uh, 18 wheels that raise up and down independently. There's three uh, ducts that hook in and they pump conditioned air into the orbiter to keep, it, keep the toxic uh, gases out and to, keep any uh, moisture out that doesn't need to be in there and to help cool the orbiter from flight. Cooling the shuttle down from temperatures that reach almost 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit during re-entry is so critical it takes one more vehicle to get the job done. It's got a Freon system in it that circulates, uh, has a heat exchanger in the orbiter and it circulates around it and takes the heat off of the orbiter so we can stay powered up until we get ready to, uh, until we get into the OPF. Finally, about four hours after wheel stop, the hatch is closed and a diesel-powered tractor slowly tugs the shuttle down a two-mile towway toward Kennedy's orbiter processing facilities called OPFs. The journey marks the end of landing convoy operations, another critical piece to NASA's human spaceflight program.